In studio with us, Helen and Leonard Harris, who have been guests on this program previously. And um, in this particular appearance, we're going to do two things. First and foremost, there's a fundraiser that they are working on with the Boys and Girls Clubs. And then we're going to be talking about the history of the Sumner Raymer School. This is uh, a school uh, that uh, has been the subject of a documentary. And this documentary is going to premiere at the Apollo on Saturday at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, Helen and Leonard know a lot about this subject. Let's welcome into the program, Mr. and Mrs. Harris. How are you? We are great. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. We are great. Good to see you again. Leonard, it's, I, haven't, I don't think I've had you on the program since the old Thanksgiving days. Uh, that's going back. <laughs> yes, yes, right? it, it might tell my age. <laughs> <laughs> back when uh, you guys were, were bringing the community into your homes for Thanksgiving, that was such a cool thing. And uh, now you're doing some work with the Boys and Girls Clubs on a fundraiser. Helen, what do you have and, and when will you have it? Yes, it's going to happen on, on um, February the 17th. It's going to be from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. It is taking place at a new place called The Stables at the Arden. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't been there, but I, I understand that it's a, a lovely place and uh, it can hold a lot of people. I uh, heard it could hold up to like 500 people. So the more people that will come out to this dance, it would be great. Uh, it's going to be a masquerade uh, this year, which is something different that we've done in the past. Um, and I would say that um, the Martinsburg Sunrise Rotary have been doing this dance for well over 20 years. And the whole point is to raise money to help sponsor the Boys and Girls Club. Um, you know, everybody knows without the Boys and Girls Club in this in the Eastern Panhandle that so many of our young people would be out on the street, wouldn't know what to do. But the, it gives them a place to go and meet up with their friends and to uh, be educated. Mm -hmm. uh, just so many things that Stacy does with the Boys and Girls Club that's wonderful. So we've been doing this for, yeah. for years. Stacy Rowan. How do you get tickets? The tickets... Um, you, you think I wouldn't know this by heart, but you could go to what's called Ticket Link. So if you're not exactly sure, just go to the Martinsburg Sunrise Rotary webpage uh, or Facebook page and go to Ticket Link. The tickets are $80 per person. Um, is $150 per couple. Uh, and also we look for sponsorship. You can go to sponsorship link. So anybody who can come out to this uh, masquerade uh, dance, it would just think it would benefit the Boys and Girls Club. And also we have a foundation with our Rotary mm -hmm. and that money is also used uh, to help out the program that we have called Eastern Panhandle Read. And um, it used to be called um, Reed Berkeley, and we've expanded out into uh, Morgan and Jefferson County also. So now it's called Eastern Panhandle Reed. So, and it gives second graders in every school at least eight to 10 books free. Wow, so that's phenomenal. That, that is something that our, our Rotary just do whatever they can to focus on our young people because without our young people and educating our young people, where are we? Got to have education. Yes. Right. Let's talk about this. Speaking of education, the Sumner Raymer School and the documentary that's going to premiere at the Apollo on the 17th, the Saturday at 2 o'clock. Uh, first and foremost, tell us your connection to the Raymer School. Well, my connection is, I'll say, I first started there when I was... Uh, six years old, so I went there for three years. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's uh, because there's a museum there, and Leonard and I do tours and run the museum. Uh, he is the, uh, I'll give him the backbone behind it because he, he's done a lot of work in order to save that school, uh, along with the board at that time because the school, the school was at risk of being sold uh, because of the Board of uh, uh, Education. Uh, had a deficit of like 2.6 million, so it was at risk of being sold, and so we had to leave the fight. How long ago was that? That was what, Leonard? Early 1990s. Yeah, it was in the 1990s, and uh, I know exactly. No, it was 1990. what year, but it was then. Okay, and and uh, we have a lot of new people in the audience all the time. A lot of people have moved to this area. <laughs> Tell everybody what the Raymer School was. The Raymer School was the only school in Berkeley County uh, for blacks, but it was originally Sumner School. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sumner 
uh, school was named for a uh, senator from Massachusetts by the name of Charles Sumner. And uh, he was one that felt that um, slavery was wrong, blacks should be educated, and so forth, to the extent that he was beaten on the Senate floor and almost beaten uh, to death. With a cane. With a cane. Right. And by a representative, and his last name was Brooks. Um, so even though he ended up out of the Senate for about three, three and a half years, Massachusetts also, when they voted, they voted to send him back to the Senate. And so uh, he couldn't come back right away, but eventually he did come back to the Senate. And ironically, uh, Brooks, who only suffered a fine, but decided to resign, but South Carolina decided, oh, we like Mr. Brooks, so we're going to send him back to (laughs) the House of Representatives. But uh, unfortunately for Mr. Brooks, um, he died before he got to go back. So, um, Payback is a... Yeah. As they say, right? Karma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, but um. Well, uh, so tell us about this documentary to air this Saturday. You go ahead. Uh, well, uh, Leonard's just going to defer to you the rest of this half hour. Thing. <laughs> the documentary uh, is being sponsored by. Um, we, we have the Martinsburg uh, NAACP. Uh, who received a human human humanitarian grant in order to um, do this documentary? Mm-hmm. Uh, Faye Stump is the one that I think is really pushed it and uh, got the grant and so forth, and uh, decided that this is something that needed to be told. She came to one of our tours and was just totally amazed uh, by what we were, you know, talking about and giving people the history of the school. And um, she just felt somehow this needed to be recorded. And um, she worked, and um, so together they all got this grant and um, decided that this documentary needed to be done. And she even contacted the narrator, who is Kevin Mambo. And Kevin Mambo is an actor. He uh, starred on, if anybody remember the soap opera, The Guiding Light, mm-hmm. many years ago, and also One Life to Live. Uh, he recently has a spot in the movie called Rustin, and Rustin is the gentleman that really started the March, the uh, 1968 March on Washington. Um, so he has a part in that, but he does narrate uh, this story of Sumner Raymer School. And I, I just don't want to forget that we there are other sponsors too, and I know Macy's uh, um, uh, is also one of the sponsors of this. So, But mainly the West Virginia Humanitarian Grant that we mm-hmm. received that really uh, got this started so we can get this show you know, and done. the school, once Martinsburg High School was integrated, the school, for the most part, kind of ramped down and then eventually closed. Yeah, because of Brown versus the Board of Education uh, that finally went through in 1954, uh, it took, you know, schools a while to still desegregate. And from what I understand with the state of West Virginia is that they try to do it in um, – well, they, they did it in different parts of the state. And uh, I know some parts of the states they tried it in, and it wasn't working because of people having uh, their trucks out with signs saying, you know, no Negroes allowed and so forth. So it was kind of rough. Um, but here in Berkeley County, it was, excuse me, Gloria Jean Carter had decided, well, I can go to a white school now. So she decided to get with a few of her friends, go use a friend's uh, telephone, uh, called up Dr. Mudge and said, uh, schools can, are, uh, can be integrated now, so can I go to Martinsburg High School? <clears throat> and he said to her, I can't stop you. So that's a quote from what Jean said. And so she and that's took- in the documentary. Uh, yes. Yeah. So she took a few other people with her. They went to Martinsburg High School. And this was 1962? No. She actually is the first graduate of Martinsburg High School in the class of 1958. 58. Okay. Wow. Yes. 
So uh, Mar- uh, Raymer School, st- it became Raymer School because the longtime principal that was there, uh, Mr. Raymer, uh, had died. Mm-hmm. And he died in 1946. So in 1947, uh, the school was renamed uh, Raymond Memorial School after him. And it's the only school in the area that's ever been named after uh, a principal, and especially a black principal. Um, so it became Raymer School, but it started scaling down in 1959. Uh, from that point on, they started eliminating grades until the year of 1963 to 1964 was the last class that was there. And then it closed for a short period. And I say a short period because it opened up as it was a vocational school. It was a school where they said uh, girls that were pregnant, you know, back then, if you got pregnant, you weren't allowed to be walking around the halls of the school. So they kind of put you out and put you in another area. So they used Raymer School for that benefit. And is this is one of the last surviving schools? As far as... That were black-only schools? As in, in Berkeley County, yes. Right. Yes. yes. Are there are there other schools that were in Jefferson County or Morgan County that are still standing? No. I know. No, not, uh, in, not in Jefferson County. Or this is the only school in Berkeley County or Morgan or Jefferson. So the only one in the Eastern Pan. How about yes. uh, in the state of West Virginia? Any idea how many schools remain? Uh, no. But this is one of the only one as far as we've been hearing. It has a museum, mm-hmm. and uh, so we have checked on that. And uh, but of uh, of other schools, uh, I do not know. How long has the uh, How long has the museum been there, and when is it When is it open? That museum, I imagine, it's been there for at least twenty five years. It has. And it's open usually, uh, we, we try to have it open regular, but then it got to a point, you gotta be very careful. Uh, uh, it's hard to find somebody to be there at all the hours it takes. So what we decided to do is, is on the brochures and so on, we put our name and phone number on there, and people can call us and make appointments. And the way it is, you make a bump, and we can be there practically any time if you really want to see it. But uh, it's such an important part of our our county's history and the history of West Virginia. I mean, what a what an amazing place! I know my my daughter spent a lot of time in there uh, playing basketball for years. Uh, Marcellus Basie used to do his trainings in there and have tons and tons of kids. And it was just uh, it's a neat place, and it was great to to be in a place with such such important history. So let's talk about the documentary. The we, we talked about the, the school being its own history, and now we're talking about the documentary. So what's the scope of the documentary itself? Is it, is it about the integration process in general, or is it focused pretty much exclusively on the history of, of the school? It focused on the history of the school, but also, um, you know, there's like <clears throat> none of us who talks on the documentary about our experiences. Um, but basically to talk about the school and people who have gone to the school. And uh, one of the main principals that was there, uh, J.R. Clifford, who has his history uh, as far as being a teacher and a principal, but also he was the first uh, African-American uh, admitted to this uh, bar for uh, because he became an attorney. So he's the first African-American that was admitted to the bar um, in West Virginia. In in West Virginia, Berkeley County in particular, th- just these schools in general, was the transition between uh, segregated to integrated reasonable? Was, was it nonviolent for the most part? I know that there are. I remember the busing stuff that happened when I was a kid. It was about ten years after that. Got got pretty pretty violent. But it, was it? How was it here at the time? Well, when we went into a white school, our family. Um, I was going into fourth grade. And um, it wasn't so much that it was violent, even though threats were made. Um, it was just very difficult because you left this atmosphere of what you felt was warmth, felt like home, because, you know, you went to church with the people you went to school with, your teachers uh, was also in your church. 
everybody knew everybody, you know, so that old saying that if you act up here, your parents are going to know about it before you even got home. Um, so you left from that comfort into a place that <clears throat> you no longer felt, <clears throat> excuse me, you no longer felt comfortable, mainly because you were being called the N-word, mm -hmm. you know, constantly called names. You know the teacher heard you being called names, but the teacher did nothing. Uh, so you couldn't even wait for, you know, when recess happened. So at least you can go outside and, and see some of your friends if they were in that particular school. Was there a rebalancing of sorts between the school populations or some of the white kids sent to the, the African-American schools as the African-Americans were sent to the white schools? Or was it just a one-way migration? Yeah, I am so glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> because we always said it was just like a one-way street. Let's move everybody out of Raymer School. Let's move them out. And they didn't move people in. So they eventually closed that school with the principal, a principal, Mr. Franklin, who resigned. And it has always been our thought that the reason why that did not happen is because Mr. Franklin was black. And how many parents back at that time would want their child in a school where there was a black principal. Because in, in my own life in 1969, 70, whenever I was in, in seventh grade, which was the division we had first through six was elementary and then, then moved on to middle school. Um, we were we, the, a very white neighborhood and we were sent to Holmes Intermediate School, which was a, a very African-American neighborhood. And um, it was, Kind of the same shock, I guess. I don't know how, it was 1968 because Martin Luther King was killed while I was there. Mm -hmm. So it was 1968. And um, it's the discomfort, it's, I guess it's universal among among kids that uh, any change, any sense of discomfort is, is, uh, is, is a tough thing to bear. Uh, so were you aware at the time that this was historical, that you were sort of the, the vanguard force in in a long term change, or was it was it just you were a kid and doing what you were told to do? Well, I was a kid doing what we were told to do, but also uh, was happy to go to a school that was closer to where we lived. So because we walked, and so uh, you know, in that sense, that was good. Uh, the only sad part of it is there was a school that was closer to us and that school would not allow us in. And I can only assume because they had their quota. And uh, so we had to go to one that was further away, but it was still a little closer than to walk from where we lived up to where Raymer School was. But eventually that year, uh, it was November that year of 1963, that our family moved close to where Raymer was. <laughs> oh. So at the time, we still had to walk then from that end all the way over to High Street School until uh, we were getting ready. I was getting ready to enter um, fifth grade, and then we transferred to Burke Street School. Were there, um, were any of the teachers from Raymer School <laughs> Did any of them move in when the when the kids were moving? Did any of the teachers, you know, keep being employed and move to to other schools? Yes, yes. Excuse me. Yes, uh, the teachers moved to uh, Bursary School, uh, High Street School, John John Street School, and uh, they all just circulate. All of them practically got jobs in other schools except the principal. The history of the Sumner Raymer School will premiere at the Apollo this Saturday at uh, 2 o'clock. There will be a Q&A afterwards. Damon Wright posted on our uh, comment section that they'll have a question and answer session after the documentary with several former students, including Damon's mom. Uh, he said, I have many family members that attended Raymer, so it's not so ancient history. And uh, that's probably another point that we need to bring up. I can remember being a little kid uh, 
I was born in 63, so I can remember being a little kid watching Pirates baseball games. And the, the announcer's talking about how in the 60s the black players couldn't stay in the same hotel rooms as the white players when they went on their southern road swings through Atlanta and, and wherever. And that seemed, even though it was maybe five or ten years previous, that seemed like it was such ancient history, like 100,000 years ago when you're a little kid. You can't even imagine the time before you were born and how things were. And when you see Damon's post and you have a conversation with you and, and Leonard here, you, you really sinks in that that wasn't that long ago. No, it wasn't. Um, it, it was it was very hard when you realized that you were being judged by the color of your skin, and that I mean, Leonard can attest to that when they used to travel for games and so forth, and how they had to travel as far as the school goes, mm -hmm. and couldn't stay in certain places. And um, if you heard of the book called, I mean, there was the movie out called The Green Book, mm -hmm. and so. Basically, they had to follow things or do things like that green book. So why don't you say something about We We that. have to get to our, our commercial break okay. here for a moment. We come back with about a, a half a minute or so, uh, too, so I hate to cut you off there, Leonard. But we do have to stop for our commercial break here. Again, the History of the Sumner Raymer School documentary will air in its premiere this Saturday at the Apollo at 2 o'clock with a Q&A session afterward. Uh, once that's made its premiere, uh, we'll be airing the documentary on TV 10, as uh, Faye has uh, generously agreed to give us the uh, documentary as well, so we can air it on TV 10 to our audience as well uh, later on. Yeah.